In Youngstown, we make steel. We make steel and talk steel. Youngstown, Ohio is a rust belt city that fades into the common narrative of steel industry glory turned tragedy of globalization. But the history of Youngstown is much more than a case example of industrial sector decline and neoliberal economics. Youngstown's urban core was shaken and shaped by powerful political and social factors that reveal nationally significant complexities of urban renewal and public policy. Youngstown's urban renewal efforts mirror many across the United States, but also demonstrate the influence of Youngstown's powerful steel labor unions and tumultuous racial and ethnic conflicts. City officials, influenced by the power of the steel industry and its interests, utilized urban renewal and interstate highway expansion to keep its steel mills afloat, often exploiting African American neighborhoods in the process. Youngstown, Ohio was founded in 1802 and by the early 20th century the city was a leading force in steel production as home to some of the largest steel mill conglomerates in the United States. Youngstown emerged during this time as both a highly industrial city and highly unionized city. By 1903, over 20 local unions were founded. During this time, waves of different and often competing ethnic and racial groups migrated to the city and carved out a place for themselves in local politics. Eastern European immigrants settled in Youngstown to take jobs in steel mills. African Americans from the South sought refuge from discrimination and more opportunity in the North, looking to Youngstown for steel jobs. Despite arriving in Youngstown under similar circumstances, the groups faced much different realities in the city. While white Europeans assimilated and built wealth in the city, African Americans continued to face discrimination in housing, employment, and politics. They were only hired by whites in the dirtiest, most dangerous jobs, and often as strike breakers, pitting the white labor unions against black workers. Those who did secure permanent positions within the steel mills found barriers to their success. Leroy Adams was born in 1929 in Statesville, North Carolina. He and his wife moved to Youngstown in 1948 following Adams' father who promised a job at his employer, Republic Steel. During his 37-year employment there, Adams noticed differences in opportunity. Patterns of conflict arose early in Youngstown's history as tensions between different racial, ethnic, religious, and socioeconomic groups played out within the city. In 1927, William S. Vaughn became the first African American to be elected to the Youngstown City Council. He represented Youngstown's third ward, which encompassed the northwest side of the city, including the Riverbend neighborhood. His election speaks to the vibrancy of the African American neighborhoods in the third ward, despite the local Ku Klux Klan's involvement in politics. Situated in the third ward of Youngstown with the Mahoning River on three sides, the Riverbend area was home to a vibrant black community before urban renewal scarred the area in the 1960s. Originally founded as the Caldwell neighborhood and colloquially referred to as Monkey's Nest, a nickname with disputed and presently unsettled racial undertones, the Riverbend area was home to thriving black businesses and professional offices. Ernest Rines moved to the area in 1960 to serve as the pastor at Holy Trinity Church on West Rayon Avenue. He and other leaders in Youngstown's black churches fought for civil rights. He said the black community in Youngstown was united in the 1960s and since then has weakened and grown distant. In 1940, the Westlake Terrace Public Housing Project opened in the Riverbend neighborhood as one of the first public housing projects of its kind in the United States. The project sought to solve the city's housing shortage problem as Youngstown experienced a population boom during the Great Migration. Because of housing discrimination and segregation, overcrowding was concentrated in black neighborhoods. Frankie Halfacre, a lifetime Youngstown resident, grew up near Westlake Terrace. His family arrived in Youngstown in the 1860s as one of the city's first black families. He described Monkey's Nest as a nice area with friendly residents, but noted the segregating forces in the area. Boundaries were drawn according to these parameters and segregation lines were clear. Banks refused to loan money to black residents outside of designated black neighborhoods such as Riverbend. 
Leroy Adams moved to Youngstown from North Carolina, seeking more employment opportunities in the North. By the 1950s, federal legislation allowed Youngstown to pursue more funding for urban renewal. The 1949 Housing Act and the 1956 National Interstate and Defense Highways Act financed decisions in the Riverbend District. Looking to the Federal Housing Act of 1949 for support, Youngstown applied for federal urban renewal funds in 1951 to help mitigate a housing shortage crisis. Despite being deemed the city of homes, housing for African Americans remained scarce. Redlining and discriminatory lending practices restricted African Americans' housing choices. In 1958, the city of Youngstown secured federal urban renewal funding for its application submitted in 1951. Youngstown was issued $1 million bond for slum clearance and urban renewal that would allow the city to undertake 13 projects by 1968. With the money for urban renewal provided by federal bonds, Youngstown quickly began tackling blight in the city through slum clearance. Riverbend became the second urban renewal project undertaken by the city. Owing to its primarily African American population, high density, mixed land uses, and aging structures, this area was largely leveled throughout the late 1950s and 1960s as part of a massive urban renewal project to fight blight. The city prioritized its federal urban renewal funds and categorized locations as sites for either clearance, redevelopment, renewal, or reconditioning. Riverbend was a first priority site for clearance. The city's actions sent a strong message that Riverbend was to be removed. The Riverbend Urban Renewal Project's official goals sought to provide better housing for the community. Despite these written objectives, the policy changes and actions taken by local officials tell a different story. In 1960, the zoning code of the Riverbend Project District was changed to industrial. With their houses slated for destruction and the land rezoned, the residents of Riverbend were left with very few housing options. Plans for a new interstate highway system cut directly through the Riverbend neighborhood. Beginning in 1959, the city contracted several draft arterial highway plans, all of which selected Riverbend for the location of an expressway and indicated that alternative housing must be provided for the area if the plan were implemented. The Madison Avenue Expressway eventually took the place of the once flourishing Riverbend neighborhood. Its construction coincided with the demolition of the majority of homes and businesses in the district. The demolition of black housing sparked public outcry from activist organizations such as the Black Panthers and politicians like Youngstown Councilman McCullough Williams. While urban renewal projects eventually were abandoned as an effective way to utilize public policy across the nation, housing was never provided for dislocated residents in Youngstown's Riverbend neighborhood. Youngstown's steel glory during both world wars and its highway building initiatives in the 1950s and 1960s are not unrelated. Post-war production decline necessitated finding new reasons to manufacture steel. The economic boom of World War II and the optimistic consumerism carrying into the 1950s was founded on unstable ground. In 1958, Youngstown experienced an economic recession that landed the city on the U.S. Department of Labor's list of the 20 most severely economically depressed cities. Youngstown steel mills saw their production decline 25 percent and the sizable and powerful steel labor force began to worry. The city government utilized highway building in the 1960s to stimulate the local steel industry. A highway plan produced by Parsons, Brinkerhoff, Hall, and McDonald in 1954 maps the proposed highway additions and conducts a cost-benefit analysis. They estimated costs to total nearly $55 million and benefits to total over $145 million. However, when the interstates were finished, the steel industry continued its decline and a once vibrant African American community was displaced and devalued. The inevitable crumble of Youngstown's remaining economic power came to fruition with the closure of Youngstown Sheet and Tubes Campbell Works Plant on September 19, 1977, an event that came to be known as Black Monday. Thousands of jobs were lost in the closure, and over the next few years, nearly all the remaining plants in Youngstown followed suit and closed their operations. While Black Monday is commonly cited as the final collapse of Youngstown's steel industry, 
public officials in the city were aware of economic decline and imminent failure since the 1940s. The Woodward Report in 1941 and the Swan Report in 1947 both urged the city to diversify its economic base. Instead of heeding these recommendations, the city, held captive by its powerful labor unions, continued to artificially prop up the industry. Urban renewal and highway building served as primary tools for doing so, at the expense of African American residents and their communities. Uncontrolled building, exploitation and decimation of indigenous habitats, spiraling taxes, deficit municipal budgets, indifferent and compromised politicians, and apathetic non-voting citizenry are allowing history to repeat itself in new, seemingly impregnable locales, insidious urban blight, unaddressed social ills, and virtual total disregard for historic preservation are dire warnings of what is yet to come. On November 1, 2013, what remained of the Riverbend neighborhood received a new public housing project, The Village at Arlington. Its 120 townhouses replaced Westlake Terrace, which had fallen to decay and was described as a haven for criminals and drugs. The village at Arlington is a small part of Youngstown's latest effort to revitalize the city through smart shrinkage, a process that recognizes the city's consistently declining population and need to re-centralize the urban core. The Youngstown 2010 plan, a nationally recognized urban planning document, mentions the Riverbend District's history as extremely poor and blighted housing stock mixed in with heavy and light industry. The city makes no mention of its displacement of Riverbend residents in its past urban renewal projects. Although the city feels the steel industry's absence still today, growth coalitions and powerful labor interests no longer fuel public policy decisions. Looking back, the city has yet to reconcile with its history and the stories of Riverbend remain deep within the shadows of the smokestacks.